Today, I'm going to reupholster the seats in my Buick Encore. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda out here with my 2018 Buick Encore. This is a car that I have really come to love. And in fact, if we walk up to it, I am very excited to show you that in this car, I don't have any new seats. They are the same old, old seats. And one of the things that I found that I really love about this car is that over the last couple of years, it has really grown on me. I thought it might be just a bridge car or something temporary, but I really love the way it drives. It's comfortable. It's small on the outside. It feels big on the inside. It's actually good to do road trips in. I took it down to Kentucky. It's pretty utilitarian with these cargo bars on top because the back doesn't hold that much. But I thought, well, if I'm gonna hold on to this for a number of years more, why not just dress it up and make it a place that I really want to be? And the place that I am in is right here. This is the interior, this is the cockpit, and these seats here, while I actually mentioned in my early review of this, are probably some of my favorite cloth seats because, you know, they don't look too cheap. They have these leatherette-like sides here vinyl essentially you know they look pretty good they feel okay they don't feel soft and supple like leather and this probably breathes that's probably actually some benefit to that but you can see i get some stains here it's easy to trap dirt and things like that this seat looks okay but i always really wanted the baseball glove leather interior in fact the car that i really think of when i think of that interior is the audi tt they had a special edition with really big stitching on it and it just seems so luxurious it was warmer it was like putting on a aviator bomber jacket or slipping into a leather seat at a cigar club or something like that so what i really wanted was to get some brown seats here that were like baseball glove baseball mitt like material color and i thought that would actually contrast with the black pretty well you know it won't look stock but it also won't look like I'm going orange or red those kind of things and because you're just doing the seats and everything else is black it worked all right because if this had colors in it or in the door panels or something like that you'd probably want to match it so I'm kind of getting a little bit of forgiveness here because of how basic and simple the interior is now I am actually doing the front and the back here now I've actually put the back seats down here because I want to show you something normally I feel like these seats are all one big piece you kind of pull out the whole seat back but in the Encore here what's kind of interesting is you get this piece here which is actually a part of the seat but it's actually not connected to the seat this piece here this leatherette vinyl area which you will sit on and it's cushioned and everything is actually still part of the door jam and it's on the side too so i'm hoping that that doesn't stay black that that gets removed and wrapped as well it looks like it attaches with a bolt down there so i thought that this job looked like it was just slightly out of my comfort zone for a DIY project. And I didn't know that I wanted to dedicate multiple days to this project on my own. So I went and hired a professional to do it. After a lot of sleuthing, I decided on a company for the seat covers and a company to install them. So let's head on over. All right, so I'm on my way to where we are going to get the new seat covers installed. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about my journey. And one of the things that I thought I would do was maybe install them myself. And I was watching some videos on how to do it. it doesn't seem like it's super hard, but it is a little tedious. You do have to kind of muscle things on. It's a little bit more art than science sometimes. Really what kind of turned me off the most was having to get the tools to install the seat covers, like the hog ring players and the hog rings and all that kind of stuff. And I was a little worried about not doing the airbags right and actually being able to find the right tools, the right sockets and everything to get the seats out of the car. And it would probably take up my entire garage, probably for a couple days. And so I was thinking, well, do I want to be down for the whole weekend making a project out of this? So I thought, all right, I'm not going to do it on my own. And when I decided not to do it on my own, then I had to look at the total cost of one, getting the seat covers, and then two, getting them installed. And actually I looked at a couple companies here. So there were a few options. The first option was to buy seat covers and there were some companies out there and they absolutely did some awesome work and they would ship you the seat covers and then you would have to find an installer. They had a small network of like local installers that they would work with. But what I found was is that it was about 
you know, twelve or thirteen hundred dollars to get the seat covers made and then shipped to you. And then pretty much everyone wanted a thousand dollars to install, even their affiliated installers. So you're looking at about twenty three hundred bucks all said and done. And I was like, oh man, that's kind of pricey. And even here in Chicago, for one of those companies, they only had two affiliates to install the seat covers, and neither of them were particularly close. The closest one was about fifty miles away, and so if it would take all day I would have to either wait there or figure out a way to get back so that's not a cheap uber ride the second option was I actually went to a local upholstery company here that does upholstery on a lot of stuff but they do boats and cars as well and they've done some really nice car stuff in fact I might use them for an upcoming project here stay tuned for that but they were actually pretty expensive. I actually did have pretty good confidence that they were going to do exactly what I wanted. And if you really wanna be involved in the process, you know, like some of the things that I saw, I could not get quilted seat covers from anyone. And if you really want them to do it, they will figure out how to do it. So, you know, it's just a price point issue. But to have them do it all said and done was like $2,800 for basically the same work. So it's even more expensive from my local poster, although it was still in the ballpark, but they would have to take off the seat covers, uh, cut up the seat covers to use as templates, manufacture everything, install it. So I get why it was that price. Now the third option was to go with a company that is pretty ubiquitous in the space, Catskin. It's kind of a first choice for a lot of people who are going to upgrade their interiors here. And Catskin Leathers have been in business for a long time. They've been featured in just a ton of stuff and so I know that they make a pretty good product and they turn it around pretty quick. Now I did just look at pictures online and I kind of matched up and I want to say I went with cognac as the color. Seemed kind of like the closest thing that I could get to my ideal baseball mid. It was a little brown, orangish caramel. You know, it was pretty close. Hopefully when I see it in person, I'll be happy. I would say it's a little brighter than the other color and I can't remember what that one was that I didn't pick, but I would say that either of those looked pretty good to me although sometimes I have some regrets that maybe I should have gone with a little more traditional browner tone leather instead of the cognac but the choice has been made the seats have already been stitched up now I did find a local installer called DPS Automotive in Arlington Heights which isn't that far from me about eight or nine miles away so I'm on my way to their shop now now they do a bunch of stuff all sorts of car customizing detailing tinting obviously they're a cat skin authorized supplier so I ordered through them and the nice thing about it is the price for everything includes the installation now they actually charge me in two parts so I'm gonna kind of guess how the expenses are broken out. They charge me an $800 deposit to get the seats made up. So if that covers the charge on the leather, that's actually one of the cheapest seat cover sets that I have found yet because they are going to charge me another $1,000 when the car is done. So $1,000 for installation, $800 for seats. So it's $1,800. It's the cheapest way I could find to go unless I want to do it myself. I'm not even sure I can order Catskin on my own. But I'm really confident, one, that it's going to get done correctly by a shop that knows what they're doing. It's also not going to be time out of my day to do it. Maybe I'd wreck something. But I'm really excited to see what the car looks like after having the professionals go ahead and take out the seats, put on the new seat covers, get it back to me. I'm hoping that it's going to be all luxurious and smooth on my body. So let's get to DPS, get the car dropped off check it out. All right, so made it here. I am at DPS Automotive here in Arlington Heights, and I'm just going to drop off the car. I didn't say anything about filming or anything like that, so I'm not getting any special treatment. This is exactly how everyone would get treated, because if I wanted special treatment, I would have told them that it was Rick Shields. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give them the car, and then I think it's going to take them two or three days, depending on what their schedule is, and then I will film it when we get back. So, let's start the clock. Two weeks later. All right, guys, so it's actually three days later. They had on Monday and then they called me on Tuesday that they had finished it but it was too late for me to come by so I'm here to pick up my car now um, actually right outside here is this Ford Focus with these rally wheels on it I love these wheels man it's pretty cool so um, I'm kind of nervous not because I don't think the work is good more about my color selection just choosing something on the screen as opposed to you know getting leather samples so let's go check it out all right, just jumped in my car, and the first thing I want to say here is I'm ecstatic. I'm going to give you a quick tour of this as soon as I park, but man, I'm thrilled with this. It's finally a place I want to be, so let's take a look. All right, I already let the cat out of the bag. You didn't get to see my initial reaction, which was I'm super happy with this. It's like a little schoolgirl. 
First of all, I want to give you an in-depth look at these seats here because I think there's lots to tell you. I am very happy. In fact, the first thing I want to talk about is the color itself, because that's what I was worried about. You know, maybe being a little too orange. You know, I was looking at not just the color samples that they had on their webpage, but also on the Facebook page where they had pictures of the install. And I thought they looked pretty good. And I would say this is definitely a little more brown. You can see it here in kind of the direct sunlight as well as the indirect sunlight. And it's definitely more brown, more baseball mitt. You know, that's what I was looking for as opposed to orangish, which I was really kind of afraid that it would skew a little bit more towards that and I actually like the fact that it is lighter like this the the next step down in that brown tone really looked brown so I like the fact that it's not now I also was thinking of just going with the regular color match stitching here but Tom Waitsman at DPS was like you know you've got a black car black interior why don't you go with the contrasting black stitching just to tie it together a little bit and I think that was the right call man it's a really subtle thing but it actually helps highlight the stitches kind of gives it a little more luxo look as well as makes it look like it is meant for the car as opposed to an afterthought which a custom interior certainly can be now one of the things that i didn't get which i really actually did want was diamond quilted stitching here in the center section you will see that there is not any and in the cat skin world they call it tech net stitching i think and then some of the other ones just call it quilted stitching now if you go full custom they can kind of do anything but i think the reason they don't do that is because i think think it's basically doubling up this panel with material because I think you have to pad it and then quilt it. So I'm not sure exactly why they won't do it. That's kind of my guess on it, but obviously not available here. I would have loved that just to kind of give it more of that really luxury look here but man i just love everything about this we'll also say that you can see the really distinct pebbling of the leather here to me cat skin leathers and seat covers always look really tough like thick leather you may have gotten an alexis where it's really soft and supple and it feels very thin but hey, you know in a good way i want to say this is definitely like a tougher leather here and i like that you know i think it's going to hold up especially for a lot of us who are daily driving picking up materials, taking kids places, got pets in it, going camping, getting dirty, whatever it might be, you want tougher, not more delicate, but more supple, right? So I really like that. The other thing I will say here is that not all of the surfaces in this trim are leather. I think there are some vinyl pieces here. It's actually really hard for me to tell. I think all these middle surfaces are leather and these bolsters are leather, but I think around the back here and like the back of the headrest are vinyl. Now I want to go in the back here because I want to show you you know i think maybe this is vinyl you can kind of tell maybe just a little bit in the stitching i think this is vinyl back here and you know it still looks very similar obviously most leather is painted the untreated leather is very uncommon in cars so there is like this paint and finish on top of it so whether it's vinyl or leather it's going to be really hard to tell but you can see how it's still soft but this isn't this area you're going to touch now on the back seat i think there is more vinyl than leather so what you can see here is i think these panels right here are leather and those actually might be the only ones i think all of this around here and on these sides here are actually vinyl the other thing i want to show you here is that as i mentioned i was worried about these pieces that are affixed to the body and not part of the movable seat let me show you here and i also want to show you here that the seat continues to work just like it always has so if i pull this down here you can see that this piece is fixed to the body panel i was wondering if they would cover that or if i would have this black panel but nope that is included in the kit there so that is finishing it off very nicely and you know in the back here where i don't know maybe you have family maybe you're driving people around in the back seat a lot you actually don't need all that leather you can get away with a lot of vinyl here now i think you can step up in the quality and get more leather or complete leather that's going to add a lot of additional cost and i don't know that you're going to necessarily see it i also want to show you here that the center armrest comes down too they have transplanted the cup holder there so no problems there and then the headrests those seem to work just fine too and the obviously the headrests front and back are recovered as well but to me, I just love that contrast there. I'm not gonna say it's subtle. And the nice thing is my door panels are black as well. So I don't have like a fabric door panel there that is also clashing or anything with the seats. But man, I just really love that. Still got the pocket back here. We've got the plastic 
panel right on the back of this seat, which is great because that actually folds down and then that is actually protecting it when you lay everything down here and use this and then the fold down rear seats to haul long stuff there. So I really, really dig it. Now, one of the things that I've noticed here is that in some parts of the seat, we have a little bit of extra thread. I think I can just trim those. I noticed one here, I noticed a couple in the back, no big deal here, but I can just clean it up a little bit. So kind of the minor nuances of a custom seat cover. I will also say that you might be looking at this and say, hey, Pete, there are some wrinkles or some places where the leather isn't perfectly tight. And there are a couple of reasons for that and a couple of things that you gotta keep in mind. So they do steam and stretch this when they are installing this. And so they are trying to get a really good fit. But I also think with temperature changes, humidity, heat, sitting out in the sun, people sitting on it, moving around, all of those types of things that's going to help stretch it out. It's kind of going to age into your seat and kind of get molded to it. So if you see some wrinkles and things that you're like, well, I wish it looked a little tighter, then great. But I actually like that. It kind of reminds me of like an easy chair, really comfortable. Now, the other thing I will say is that when you get in this, especially if you're moving from cloth, one of the things that I like about cloth, I guess, is that it's grippy. So you don't move around a lot. If you are driving a race car and pulling hard Gs, so you kind of want cloth or Alcantara or something like that that's going to hold you in place. But what I realized here is that as I was driving with this, when you move around, you do those little shifts, you know, kind of move your butt from side to side just to kind of get comfortable every few minutes. You are sliding around a lot easier on these. And so it's actually easier. You don't feel like your clothes binding up. So there actually is an advantage of leather or vinyl, to be honest, over cloth in that you can just make those small adjustments on a regular basis without feeling kind of like you have cloth on cloth. So it's just more comfortable. I tell you what, man, you just drive happier with leather interior. It just feels nicer. It feels so good. I mean, I took off all my clothes and I drove home naked just to get the feel of the leather on my skin. Well, the other thing here that I will say here, which makes total sense, but I didn't even think about it actually when I got this, is that because you do get so much leather in here, it smells like a new car. I jumped in here and it smells like a leather store. I mean, I think a lot of that is going to go away as it airs off, off gases over time. You're going to kind of lose that. But man, what I didn't realize is how much leather, you know, when you get a new pair of shoes, there is a lot of leather on there, but there's not nearly as much leather as there is in a new set of seat covers. And so I got in here and I was like, oh, oh, that delicious smell of leather. So I'm going to enjoy that for as long as it will last. But I tell you what. I didn't have to install this. It was the cheapest option for me to get leather seats in this car. It took two days, not even really two full days, and they did a fantastic job, and it has really refreshed this car. For me, this is my daily driver. It's where I spend most of my time when I'm driving. And I just wanted to finally finish it off so that it was really a place I wanted to be, that I got in it and felt like I'm not making any compromise. This is what I want, you know? So it feels like a full-on luxury car, except it's the price of an entry-level subcompact. And so that is what I love about it. And the other thing that I like about this, you know, from a financial life hack standpoint is maybe you have a car and you want to dress it up. Maybe you have a car and you're like, I wanted to get the higher trim package and I want to buy a new car. You know, you don't have to do that. I will say, yeah, for almost $2,000, this isn't necessarily like the cheapest upgrade, but I think I've seen a lot of people, you know, want Apple CarPlay in their car. They want leather interiors. They didn't get them when they originally got their car and they think that they have to upgrade to a new car, a brand new car. And so you're going now from a car that's maybe worth 10 grand to a car that's worth 30 grand and you're paying this $20,000 premium to get something that's 1900 bucks, right? And so it's kind of a nice life hack to extend the longevity of the car you have, right? Now you can get all of those things. You can get an Apple CarPlay stereo from an aftermarket stereo provider. You can get these catskin leather interiors and now you're just dressing it up, especially if you have a car that runs well, you know, it's reliable, you enjoy the size, it's got all the features you want. You know, for me, honestly, not upgrading to a new car is kind of something I've been trying to do because I hate the auto stop start feature. So it's kind of something that's actually gotten me to not want to buy a car. So I think this could be an awesome life hack for, yeah, spending a little money, but avoiding the big expenditure. Man, I just love it. Hey, if you want to upgrade your car to make it the way you want, to give yourself a little taste of that luxury, I think you should check out Catskin. I am certainly happy with my purchase and man, I'm excited to drive once again. If you want to pick up this, I'll put a link to Catskin so you can check them out in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper. Hey!